Okay, this is the Stack Hard Podcast. This is another special interview episode. Today on the program, we're going to have David Starr, who is currently one of the top rising wrestlers in the industry today. So, pretty stoked to talk to him. Definitely. Sure, you too. Yeah, we've seen him at the past couple of Beyond Wrestling events. Uh, definitely one of the best to see in the ring, I believe. And uh, he's wrestling very often as well. He also has an acting career. Well, yeah, he was. He started in the movie Noah, so we'll ask him about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he beat John Silver and he beat Matthew Palmer in the matches that we saw at Powder Keg and Gratitude Era. He was involved in the um, Tournament for Tomorrow singles it ended, tournament. It ended up. He ended up winning his uh, tournament block. He went on with um, Brian Fury, Leo Rush. Yeah, and um, Jay. I got it. You got it. I, I've got. The, that's why I've got, we got the data. The, that's why we got the man with the iPad. Yes, this yeah. iPad has like the answer to all of life's questions on it. it does. Well, <laughs> we take notes an iPad uh, as well. So Ryan Rush Galone. Ryan. Oh, okay, Ryan Galone. Yeah. What did I say, Brian? Oh, Jason. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. So Ryan Galone, yeah. Leo, and Brian Ferry, who yeah. is one of my favorites. Yeah. As well. So yeah, that. Yeah. Brian ended up winning it, but I heard it was one of the most insane matches of the year. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole event in general, tournament for, tournament for Tomorrow 4 was awesome, so I'm really kind of bummed that we missed out on it. It seemed yeah. like it was great seeing all of uh, all those spectacular wrestlers together in one night, so uh, I think we should just cut to the chase. and Cut to the chase. Go ahead. Now it's bright in here. <laughs> the Skype enlightens us all. Oh, of course. Hey, David. What's up? Hey, welcome to the program. <clears throat> How you doing tonight? I'm actually just eating some, uh, some, some nice soup from my, from my darling mother. Oh, there wow. you go. That's there awesome. Go. Yeah. What? What type of soup you got? What type of soup? Yeah. It is, it's actually vegan vegetable soup. I'm not like a vegan or anything, so don't get the wrong idea. But, yeah. Um, but it's delicious. All right. I can imagine. Good choice, good choice. So we were just talking about your, uh, oh, look at that. That looks amazing. I'll have to come by for some soon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, she dropped, she dropped it off, um, what, like last week or something? That's awesome. Wow. So, um, how was your weekend? Uh, I know you had the tournament, and we were just talking about it, how you ended up winning your block, and then you had uh, your the second portion of the tournament, which didn't turn out so well. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, overall, it was two, two great shows for Beyond Wrestling. Um, as you, like, they continue to prove that they're one of the best independent wrestling companies that out there period um there was a lot of great talent on the shows uh a lot of great matches on the shows a lot of good characters you had a, a bit of everything there is to have and uh yeah the first match went first match went well i i uh i ended up pinning kip stevens uh to advance into the finals and then in the finals match i got pins on both ryan galeone and leo rush and then um pretty much Immediately after I got, uh, I pinned Leo, Brian Fury snuck right behind me and uh, got a really well executed and tight schoolboy roll up and uh, kept me down for three seconds. But you know, it is it is what it is. Um, it sucks. It was something that uh, I was really, uh, <laughs> it was something I was really really aiming for and really trying to accomplish. Um, but sometimes it's just. Things don't go your way, but I couldn't. I couldn't give any more effort. I guess that's like the worst, uh, worst way I could possibly, or best way I can think of it. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't because I didn't train hard. It wasn't because I didn't prepare. It wasn't because of anything other than just Ryan's a really good wrestler, and he took advantage of the situation. And what can? What else can you really say? Yeah, I mean, it's still definitely an accomplishment because you did get all those pins and 
you did win your preliminary bracket, so... And it yeah. doesn't, in general, you've been on a roll. I know the two shows that we went to, Gratitude Era and Powder Keg, you ended up winning both of your matches, so you've really been on the rise lately. Things are going, things are going really well. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the way things are going, and then this weekend, um, I don't know when this is airing, because I know you guys said this wasn't live, but um, this weekend, uh, I'm going to go out to Rockstar Pro in Dayton, one of my favorite places to wrestle, and I'll... Um, I'm going to be wrestling Matt Taylor on their Wednesday uh, AMP taping. And then on Friday for their IP review, I'm in a triple threat for the Rockstar Pro Championship against Dave Christ and Aaron Williams. And then I'm following that right up on um, the 5th, which I guess at this point it will have been announced. It'll be David Starr versus Matt Riddle at Legacy Wrestling in Mannheim, PA. So I have a pretty good weekend coming up this weekend. A lot of good things happening moving forward. Um, going to Europe in 2016 to start my year off. Wow, so that's wow. going to be really awesome. <laughs> that's um, great. Cage of Death coming up December 12th. And hopefully uh, hopefully some guy shows up that I've been calling out and I, <laughs> I'm telling him that, that that match should be booked. So hopefully <laughs> hopefully that happens and then that'll, that'll go down and wrestle on EC3 the next week. Uh, and the day before I wrestle EC3, I'm wrestling Brian Myers. And... Yeah, things are things are doing pretty well. Wow, that's definitely a loaded up schedule. So you're yeah. killing it right now. It's nice, man. It's it's not um, pro wrestling has been very nice to me. I've been very fortunate for um, the sport to treat me well, uh, especially considering it's something I've wanted to do forever. Um, so it's it's really cool, man. It's cool that I get to pay my bills by uh, by dressing up in spandex every weekend. <laughs> You started when you were seven, right? Yeah, I um, I wrestled youth wrestling uh, with the Jenkintown Youth Activities Club, which became the Abington Bulldogs. Um, hmm. Yeah, I started when I was seven years old, but I fell in love with wrestling when I was five, uh, watching HBK Bret Hart at um, Mania 12. That was what made me fall in love with professional wrestling, and then... Um, yeah, and then I became an, I was I wrestled amateur. I wrestled through junior high, high school, college, um, and then I decided to decided to go pro. <laughs> That's great. So what um when you watched because I know amateur wrestling is a little bit different from the wrestling you see on TV. So as a kid, you probably saw Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart doing some crazy shenanigans. But then when you got out there, it was like, it was more like grapples and um, more like amateur. So how, uh, were you expecting like there to be some kind of storyline as a kid going into it? When I was a kid, I signed up for wrestling um, for a couple of reasons. One, my parents signed me up because I had terrible hand-eye coordination. <laughs> like I would, uh, I'd throw a ball up to myself and totally miss it. <laughs> uh, and wrestling doesn't involve one of those, so uh, that was a plus. Two, uh, apparently I was a, a very aggressive kid. I was told, which um, which is so strange because I'm like the most laid-back person ever now. Um, but and then three, I thought it was going to be like pro wrestling. <laughs> I walked into the wrestling room. Uh, at my, which was going to be at my junior high, um, that's where the youth program ran their their practices. I went I went in there and I was really confused because there was no ropes, <laughs> and uh, I and then actually I like, got my second or third practice. Um, all the kids, we all watched pro wrestling back then. That's when everyone was watching pro wrestling, uh, so they, everyone knew everything. You know, everyone knew everything or whatever. <laughs> so uh, a total "don't try this at home" moment happened, in which we were all. Uh, all the kids, so now we're ages 6 to 10 in this room, and so after practice, we all decide that we're going to do pro wrestling, so we all started doing pro wrestling stuff, and then I legitimately power bombed a kid on the mats, and he started crying, <laughs> so then I started crying, <laughs> and then I got, and then I was just, I was pulled aside by somebody who ended up being one of my high school coaches, uh, and he was like, hey, it's okay, just don't ever do that. <laughs> and uh, so that was, that was that's always the interesting story, but I thought it was going to be like pro wrestling. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't. And now, now I get to do it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. 
but I think, you know, like, having that amateur background, you know, you know, knowing the true roots of wrestling, that has to help you in so many different ways because I know, like, me personally, a lot of my favorite wrestlers are the ones that do have that technical amateur background to, like, the Kurt Angles of the world. So I think, you know, being able, being able to blend both types, you know, like the sports entertainment side and, you know, the amateur side is really great. Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's fun. It's kind of cool because when you first start, uh, you know, wrestling professionally, you're, you have these ideas of the way you wrestle is supposed to be like a pro wrestler. And then as you learn and work and, uh, you know, you wrestle with so many different people and you realize that you can just – open up so much by just unlocking the idea of not having to do things one way. Um, and it's so great. Like I've gotten the opportunity to, to learn a lot of like Lucha Libre stuff, to learn a lot of uh, European style wrestling, a lot of Japanese style wrestling. I've gotten to like, you know, train with so many different people and gotten to wrestle so many different people with so many different backgrounds uh, that I'm able to incorporate what I like, what I think is what I, my version of pro wrestling and um, just kind of incorporate that with everybody else's stuff. And it's always, it's always really fun, man. And uh, I've noticed though that some people have a, a hard time transitioning from amateur wrestling to pro wrestling for whatever reason. Um, some people have a tough time and some people pick it up right away. But I think wrestling through college and everything was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You, um, you traveled around, I'm sure, the different countries a lot, I would say. Um, which foreign country was the most exciting to wrestle in for you? Uh, most exciting to wrestle in would probably be Mexico. Hmm. Um, wrestling in Mexico was really cool. Uh, again, that Lucha Libre style, just being around those fans, they're so passionate, they're so into every single thing. And... I had the opportunity to go down there and do something different than what was on the rest of the show. Um, you know, everyone was doing a lot of a lot of really really amazing stuff, and I and I decided just to kind of like be a dick. <laughs> so, and they really got into that, and then it was it was it was a lot of fun wrestling in Mexico. Um, my favorite place that I've been outside of the U.S. is probably Australia, though, um, oh. and I wrestled I wrestled there. And that was that was really cool. Um, that was really cool because of the overall experience. Um, but I was the most excited to wrestle in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can Excellent. envision like in Mexico having really spirited fans uh, from everything that I've heard. And I mean, just going to Australia in general. I, I mean, I think there's a lot to do there. Just you know, enjoying the weather and the atmosphere and the vibes. So has to yeah, be spectacular. Yeah, it, it was awesome. And the guy who brought me over was like uh, his name's Mana. He runs uh, New Horizons Pro Wrestling. He's the nicest person in the world. Um, he's the nicest person in the world, man. Like, he's awesome. He he didn't let me... Like, he took us out everywhere. Uh, he would, he paid for our bar tabs. He paid <laughs> for our food. He paid for... He, like, paid for us to go, like, swim with sharks and to go to petting zoo. Like, it was awesome. We got the entire experience, and it was really cool. That's... Um, Australia was a great time. Mm-hmm. Nice. So I know you were talking about your experience wrestling in Mexico and how you really liked riling up the fans and stuff and, you know, getting on uh, the bad side there. And, I mean, that put, sort of plays into your nickname, or one of them at least, the King of Taunts. So uh, why don't you tell us about that and tell us what it's like, you know, being a, a heel character that's, uh, you know, kind of arrogant to his opponents. Well, I mean, all in all, I think, I think the idea of uh, good guys and bad guys is kind of, uh, passe at this point. It's really funny. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it's kind of passe at this point, I think. I, I, I mean, I guess every everything has a time and its place, but I think overall, as long as you stay true to who you are and who your character is supposed to be or whatever, um, I think that's really what's important. So, there are places that I'm supposed to be, you know, the bad guy and people cheer me. There's places I'm supposed to be the good guy and people boo me. Um, and then there's places I'm supposed to be a good guy and they cheer me and places I'm supposed to be a bad guy and they boo me. So, like, you just got to stay true to your character and go out there and tell good stories, man. Like, uh, just do everything to the best of your ability. Uh, I have a ton of fun being me. Uh, I think that's overall, like, 
I, I hope that translates to fans who uh, who watch me perform. Uh, but I have a ton of fun being able to be myself and like have my own creative freedom as far as what I do in the ring and the picture I paint. Um, I'm I'm really happy with everything that's going on. Is there a certain reaction you're generally trying to get from crowds, or is it do you sort of go by the motto like any reaction is a good reaction? Well, I, I would definitely say any reaction is a good reaction, um, but I think you go in with the idea that people are going to react a certain way to certain things, and once you really get that concept and you're able to really feel the crowd and you can know what they're going to do, that's really when you kind of get in your you get in a zone, and that's when you start things start flowing, things start doing well, and you can you can see people that know how to do that. Um, I think my favorite person to watch who just can work with the crowd he's the best at it. I think it's Randy Orton I think he's he gets people to do whatever he wants all the time True. And, yeah. I, and I don't think there's any doubting that um, when he's a when he's supposed to be disliked he makes people dislike him when he's supposed to be liked people like him when he wants people to think an RKO is coming people think an RKO is coming like he knows exactly how to get emotional reactions out of every crowd he's in front of so um, I think I think you have an idea of what you're going for in your head, but yeah, any reaction is a good reaction at the end of the day. Mm, yeah, that almost reminds me too of uh, Kevin Owens a couple of weeks ago. I think uh, WWE actually traveled over to England, and um, and it was like a big time like heel audience. You know, they were like he was getting loud pops as soon as he walked out, and yet at the same time he was just insulting them. Like he was, I think he was insulting the Queen, and he was calling them all dumb and stupid. And I think they just cheered even louder. So. <laughs> It yeah, is. I mean, dude, it's like it's so funny because um, <laughs> it's like you just at some point you're just so entertaining that people like you. Mm-hmm. You know what I yep. mean? Like, and and I think a lot of people again they get trapped in the idea of uh, I think people get locked into thinking that oh I'm supposed to be a good guy so I can't say this or can't say this or can't say this um, or they're like I'm a bad guy so I'm supposed to say this I'm supposed to say this. When I think in reality, it's more of uh, just knowing your audience and knowing what's going to get proper reactions. Um, and I, I think Kevin Owens is someone who knows exactly what he's doing, and there's a reason why he's one of the best. Period. You said how uh, Randy Orton was, you know, one of the best at getting reactions. In your opinion, um, yeah. what would you say, like? Recently, um, I know he had that. I I, pretty sure you must have followed it. He had that IED storyline where they pretended like he had some kind of uh, mental problem and he attacked Vince <laughs> Stephanie. After that, though, um, basically he was just putting random singles matches with guys like Sheamus, and there was really no character to Orton. So, uh, what do you think about the way they kind of? put him in that situation where he had no personality, he had no character, it just kind of, he was just one of the regular wrestlers out there? Um, all in all, I mean, I think everyone has their cycles in which they don't have necessarily a storyline. Um, I think sometimes it's good to have those gaps in between. Um, and I'm obviously I'm not, I'm not there, at, I'm not at that particular company to know mm-hmm. really what's going on, but uh, I would I would guess to say that uh, whatever's going on with Randy Orton or was going on with Randy Orton is kind of something Randy Orton wants to do. Yeah. Um, I think he's earned uh, that right, and there's a lot of guys who have earned that right. Um, I think he's great no matter what he does. I think the thing that's cool about Randy Orton is at this point he's so over that he can you can insert him anywhere. And it helps. Um, he can be a main eventer. He could be a mid card guy. He could be your opener. Like he has good matches all the time. And I think he, when he's on, he's the best out there. And I think that's just this is my opinion. I mean, there's probably a bunch of people that will disagree with me and tell me I'm an <laughs> idiot. Um, but I, I think I think that's fair to say. Um, and what do I think about him being in random matches? I mean, I, you know, you'd like to say, oh, he's so good, he's so valuable, he should never be in anything random, but it's just how it happens sometimes. Sometimes that's where you are, 
but he's always made himself relevant, which is a testament to how good he is all the time. No, I definitely agree. I mean, I grew up as one of the huge Randy Orton fans. I My favorite part of Randy Orton was when he was with Ray the RKO, him and Edge. I was fans of both of them, and uh, I loved it. You know, I thought he had that personality that fit right with Edge, and they kind of fit, fed off of each other a lot. Um, that's why, coming from an, I'm an Orton fan as well, just seeing him in those matches with Sheamus and stuff almost every single week. You know, I mean, random matches are fine because you, sometimes you get to see pairings that you've never seen before. And even if he went down to the Intercontinental title, he could always do what Cena did, you know, and help the mid-card division kind of grow. But just to hear the fans, you know, say boring, boring during his match, to go from having one of the most electric personalities to that, I don't know, it just, to me, it was kind of disappointing, you know? Well, I guess, I, you know, I could, I could see that, but, again, he's always able to turn it on whenever he wants. Yeah. So, anytime they give him something, he, he usually turns it into the best, the best he could possibly do, and the best he can possibly do is be the best there is out there. I oh, mean, course. think about it, he, like even in a very short run, uh, his matches with Seth Rollins were amazing. Yeah, um, he had a bunch of good matches with Sheamus when they did that. When they did that feud <laughs> recently, um, he's had good matches with Big Show. He's had good matches with Roman Reigns. He's mm-hmm. had good matches with Dean Ambrose. He has good matches with both old school guys who are still there and the new guys that are still there. So he can just go. Like he's that good. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I think they have a lot of really talented guys on the roster. It's um, it's really, really good. And the thing that's so funny about people saying random matches, um, how many everyone almost everyone's favorite independent promotions, mm-hmm. most of the time it's just kinda like random match that you just say, Oh, it's a dream match because it's two guys who are really good. Yeah. So WWE does that all the time. Because if you think about if Sheamus were to be released for whatever reason, I, like who knows why, whatever. Just hypothetically speaking, he's on the Indies. Every match he had against a top guy in the Indies would be considered a dream match. Yeah, and it'd yeah. be random. That's true. So, yeah. I mean, Good point. So, David, who do you think you'd say is your all-time favorite wrestler? Maybe the wrestler that sort of had the biggest uh, inspiration on you. Superstar Billy Graham. Re- any reason why? When I was little. Um, when I first saw WrestleMania 12, that's when I got into it. My stepdad took me to the local RF video stand to um, to pick up some old tapes because he was a huge wrestling fan when he was a kid, and he loved Bruno and Superstar and Flair and Dusty and Magnum and all and all those guys. He loved NWA and old WWF stuff, <laughs> um, and all that. So we got a bunch of tapes. We got tapes of the Von Erichs and the Freebirds, and we got. Um, you know, everything you get to the AWA stuff, like I watched Bachwinkle and all of those guys. So I love the old school stuff. And Superstar Billy Graham just stood out to me because he was so colorful and just so out there. When everyone else was wearing black trunks or blue trunks or red trunks, whatever, he was wearing tie dye. <laughs> he had the bleach blonde hair with the big mutton chops. And he was like so good at interviews. And like he, he was just so charismatic. And he was built. Like, no one was built like that then. They were all kind of, like, powerlifter builds, and he was a bodybuilder, and it was... I, I thought he was awesome. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get to meet him and talk to him for, like, a half hour a couple of years back, and it was, like, one of the best experiences I ever had. I was so happy that I got to do that. Oh, wow. Man, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, it must be an honor just meeting your hero like that. You know, the guy that really uh, so inspired you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so awesome. He was, like, the coolest guy ever. Um, I was so happy, like it went exactly how I would have wanted. Um, we got it was it was great. Where'd you end up meeting him? At WrestleCon when it was in uh, New Jersey. So that was the the year. I think I was Rock Cena two. All right. Yeah. That WrestleMania weekend is when I met him. Wow, that's great. Yeah. It was awesome, man. It was it was awesome. I have no idea. Like I don't know if you guys just saw, but like a couple. Uh, I guess last September. I actually had gotten my uh, facial hair dyed like him. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. I have to check that out. Is it oh, pic- it was pretty epic. <laughs> this pictures on Facebook? Yeah, I didn't hide it. I wrestled with it for a month. Oh wow. All right, yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, it was cool, man. Yeah, at least I have to Google it. I'm sure it's on Google Images. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Um, there, like, if I, I'm pretty sure it's on my Facebook. There's a couple of them, but I, yeah, I wrestled. We had a few big matches that we had uh, the CCW uh, ladder match, the Down with the Sinkers ladder match. I had with that. I think it was my first match with it. I also wrestled Tommaso Ciampa with it. Um, we wrestled a Life 4K uh, for the tag titles with that. Like it was, nice. I, I was pretty, I was pretty out there with that, with that sweet facial hair combo. <laughs> there you go, paying homage to the all time great. Yeah, he's the man. <laughs> So, what do you think is your favorite style of match to wrestle? I mean, you just mentioned in CZW you were in that uh, ladder match. Do you tend to like more like one-on-one matches, tag team matches, or maybe something with a stipulation? Um, I I love tag team wrestling. I think it's so cool, and I think it's uh, when done right, it's it could be the best match in the show easily, especially because there's not as many tag team matches. Um, I really, I don't know. I like I just like wrestling, man. Uh, <laughs> I would say. I would say I would prefer a single or a tag match, like a two-on-two tag match, to any multi-man match. I prefer singles and ta- and straight-up tags. Um, stipulations are always fun because there's a different story you can tell with that, and uh, you can always take advantage of certain things and uh, you know go a little bit even more outside the box um, and be innovative in that kind of way. So that's always cool. Um, I. My favorite type of match, as far as that, like, yeah, I guess sing- I guess right now I would say singles. I'm a singles wrestler, um, and if I was going style wise, I like, I really like those competitive fight feel matches. Like I love like the Angle Benoit matches. Um, anything with Eddie Guerrero is like mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, uh, I I think Malenko is one of the best wrestlers ever. And he had and he had so many different styles. He could he could do everything. Um, yeah, I'd say those guys are kind of they're the best, man. Like they're so good. And the yeah, yeah. It, was, it was definitely amazing <clears throat> the path that those guys traveled. Of, I mean, they were like wrestling together for uh, on many different occasions and in many different companies. You know, like you look at yeah, uh, they, yeah, dude. It's like they had dream careers. Like guys like that and Jericho and all that. Like. It's not. It's crazy to think that that's that is possible. I mean, I guess it's kind of happening now because you have these independent guys who are going all over the world and making a name for themselves, and then getting uh, the call for the big time uh, for the big time, whatever you know. Uh, yeah. But I, it's rare. Like I guess now that's coming back, but it seemed like that went away for so long. Um, and I was actually I was just talking to uh, I was just talking to Monster Mac on Sunday about it and we were, they were talking about uh, how he was talking about how all these guys he was watching like the rockers and all this stuff in all Japan and he was watching all these guys in you know, these are Japanese companies or different uh, companies internationally wrestling all these other names that never were in WWE but back then it was like guys could do that like you you had guys who were on TV in America big time names travel the world and just wrestle everywhere and that doesn't happen anymore. So it's really cool to think that that happened then, and you get to see it. You can see Hogan in Japan. Like what? <laughs> it's so wild. Um, and, and just thinking about how like Flair would wrestle in Korea and then wrestle in California the same like with, within the same two days. Uh, uh, like that's nuts, man. Uh, so uh, it's it, they had the dream careers, being able to do everything they did, and then go to TV, like, and do all that. It's, like, the best of every world ever. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, uh, I mean, certain organizations are doing that now. I know, like, with TNA, they're not as strict with the contracts. Like, we'll see, like, NEC3 wrestling with independent groups along with being on TNA. Yep, wrestling you, of course. (laughs) That'll be exciting. And uh, I know another one is Tommaso Ciampa because uh, he was in TNA, and I know he's on NXT occasionally, but I know he's going to be at the next Beyond show, too. So, yeah, he's wrestling Donovan Dijak. It's yeah, going to be awesome. That's yeah. Speak talking about dream matches. Yeah, that's going to be incredible. Well, that's um, Dijak has been saying for a while that that's like his his dream match. Like he wants to wrestle Tommaso so bad, and now he's getting it. 
and it's gonna be at the last show at Fent because they're uh, Beyond's finding a new home uh, starting in 2016. So that'll be a great way to close out Fent with somebody who seems to be the new top star uh, in Donovan Dijak. He's he doesn't have bad matches. That's mm-hmm. the best thing you can say. Like Donovan Dijak does not have bad matches. He's that good. Um, and him and Tommaso is going to be amazing. But like, Tommaso, everything he's done, he's earned it. He's he's awesome. Like he's the man. And he's so smart to wrestling and everything. So good about him. Have you ever uh, stepped foot in the ring with either one of those guys? I wrestled Dijak a couple, uh, maybe like two months ago, and it was one of my favorite matches I've had. And I wrestled Tommaso one time, but it was in the three way. Um, it was me, Tommaso, and uh, Antonio Otama. And it was really, it was, it was a really good match. It was one of my favorite matches I've had there too. Uh, and the cool thing about it was that we didn't really. It was a lot of stuff was just very, very natural and very genuine. It was cool, man. It was. He's great. I mean, I've, I've picked his brain a bunch about um, when I'm on shows with him. I always ask him to to watch my, my matches and tell me things he sees. And he's always somebody who's really great with giving advice and tips. Uh, he's just someone who's great for professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Kind of on that note, too. Uh, typically, do you go back and watch the film of your matches and sort of yes. assess? You do. Are you, like, <laughs> obsessive with it? And just. Oh, I am. I would definitely say I'm a... Um, I'm obsessed with watching my own matches and I don't even mean that in like a, uh, a narcissistic way. Yeah. I mean that in like, I hate myself when I watch my matches. <laughs> um, as far as, uh, I always try to watch it at least, at least like five times. Yeah. Um, and the first time I'll watch it, I'll just watch it just to watch it and see how I feel about it. And then, um, and then I'll try and watch it and just be entertained and see if I'm entertained by things. Then I'll watch it critically and then i'll show it to some of my friends who are wrestling fans and then i'll show it to friends of mine that aren't wrestling fans <laughs> and then i'll show it to i'll show it in front of a bunch of people and then i'll watch it by myself and really break it down and then um i'll probably i'll keep watching it and i'll be like why did i do that <laughs> i i do it pretty much all the time um i'm either watching my matches or somebody else's um like today uh i watched uh, Roger Strong versus Zack Sabre Jr. because that's on for free up until midnight tonight. So oh, wow. if you want to check it out, um, I believe WWN posted it. It's on Gabe's Bolsey Twitter, so check that out. Right. Um, it was uh, and it was awesome. I, I want to watch it again. I watched <laughs> it the first time and just watched it as a fan, like being so so happy to watch the match. And now um, and then you break it down, you see things, you pick up stuff from them, and uh, two of the best out there again. Another two guys that I want to work with. Um, yeah, it was just, it was, uh, it, I definitely dissect my matches. I watch them to point of obsession. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the best way to be because you have to be your own worst critic and you really have to knit and grit it out and, you know, figure out what you did right, what you did wrong. And I mean, I think anytime you do something, you always have to be very critical about it in order to strive to be better next time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I think, uh, and I guess that's obviously the approach I've taken. Um, so, uh, and I think that part, the other part of it is I send out the matches to uh, people who have helped me out along the way, and I get their opinion and their advice on everything. So, like, I get that from an outside perspective as well. Um, so it's always really good. That's great. Um, where would you say, because... I believe I read that you made your pro wrestling debut in 2013, was it? 2012. 12. Uh, the day before my 21st birthday. Wow. How about that? That's that's a good birthday gift, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was cool, man. It was, uh, it was real cool. I, uh, I started training at the Wild Simone Training Center in January 2012. And then I had my first match February 18th, 2012. And, uh, yeah, it was really cool. It was Great experience. Which was the first promotion you've ever worked for? WXWC4, run by Samu Anawaii, uh, also known as the head. Tr- well, he was one of the head shrinkers and the Samoan SWAT team and all that. He tagged with um, Rikishi back oh. when they were tearing it everywhere, and he's done everything there is to do in wrestling. I mean, he wrestled Ric Flair at 18 years old for the <laughs> World Championship. Like, come on now. Yeah. 
Gee. So I'm, I'm looking at your hat right now, and I know you do have the product and the brand. There you are, switching it up. So, uh, now you can't see my face. <laughs> so your nickname is The Product. Any any reason how that came up? Is there a story behind it? Yeah, it's about penis. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, uh, so I was on the phone with uh, one of my mentors, and uh, he was teaching me, He was because I was kind of starting to travel, and he was basically saying, hey, um, there's going to be girls that show up to the shows just to hook up with the guys, so <laughs> you have to be very careful of all these people, all, the, all this stuff like that, and then um, I went on this long rant making a metaphor uh, <laughs> comparing my sex to a product. <laughs> and then we just sat there like, hey, it'd be a pretty good nickname. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, by far, probably the best nickname in all of wrestling. I'd like to think so, right? <laughs> you can't talk about it. It's weird because no one's, no one's, there's a lot, and there's a lot of different parallels to it. You know, like I am a product because I'm selling myself and all that stuff like that. There's a bunch of, things that really uh it makes a lot of sense um but it's yeah it's cool i'm uh, like I'm, I'm really happy that i came up with it it's pretty <laughs> i think it's very original yeah yeah, yeah very innovative no, i can't think of a nickname quite like that one so <laughs> is there a place where uh like fans can pick up memorabilia hats t-shirts things like that yeah uh check out my website the product ds.com which has a direct link to my pro wrestling tea store, as well as I have these really cool uh, wristbands and stuff. I also have stickers up there. I have my brand new shirts uh, that aren't on pro wrestling tees that you can only get through PayPal or through my website. Um, my pro wrestling tea store is prowrestlingtees.com slash David Starr. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That works. That's a lot of places you can get my merch and stuff. And when you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the product DS, you'll be able to find out stuff like this and keep posting. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I think we're following you on Twitter too. You've had some gems up there, so. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm pretty good at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you've mastered it at this point. Ah uh, well, you know, once I get the what like two hundred thousand million quadrillion followers, yeah. then I'll say I mastered it. Uh, I think you'll get there. So, <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> so what's what's the end goal? What are you uh, sort of striving for? What do you think is the next big move in your career? Well, I mean, uh, I've always I've always said as a way to keep myself sane um, that I don't. My goal can only be something that I can control because if a goal is something that is dependent on someone else's decision, then I would drive myself crazy. Um, so I only can focus on getting myself better every single day at whatever it is I want to do as a, uh, as a person, as a performer, uh, and in every aspect, as a friend, as a, uh, you know, everything. So I'm trying to make myself as good of a person as I possibly can be and every day to get better and better and better at it, whatever I feel the improvement of the day would be. Um, but obviously there's places I would like to wrestle that I haven't wrestled before. Um, and you could probably figure those out. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 I just focus on me, like working out at the gym, watching tape, going to training, like pretty much what I try to do just to get better. Yeah, if you work hard, the results are going to follow. You know, you just got to keep the positivity up, and that's it. And you can, yeah. Your positivity. <laughs> there we go, moral of the story. <laughs> yeah, always, man. Could you pick, like, a favorite match from your career that you've wrestled? I guess, I guess at this moment, I would have to say um, the 100. And I had a 104 minute match uh, wow. recently. Wow. Uh, yeah, I wrestled Dave Christ in Ohio for Rockstar Pro, and that match is available at DIYWrestling.com uh, for purchase. And yeah, we wrestled for 104 minutes, or an hour and 44 minutes, in front of a live audience, and they were, and the crowd was amazing. They were with us every step of the way. And it was just a great, 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 great experience um, being completely physically exhausted. That's incredible. Wow. How do you prepare for something like that? Do you have to, like, change up your schedule the week before and um, do a little more to be in the ring for that long? 
Um, I've always, I've always kind of had the idea that I should be able to, to do those really long matches, you know, and, um, again, with all, all the things I grew up with, like I told you, uh, guys in the beginning, I, all, all those guys, they, they wrestled 60 minute matches all the time. So it's like, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do it. Um, so I really didn't change up my preparation. I work, I never, I never take my foot off the gas pedal. Uh, I'm always trying to get myself better and improve myself and whether that's conditioning or whatever it is. So I felt that I was ready to do it and it was, it went pretty well. Who, who ended up winning, winning the match? Dave, Dave won at the very end. Wow. Uh, with uh, he does a really crazy version of a of a cutter off like he does like a springboard to it's insane. <laughs> and we were we were pretty much completely both done and he happened to get on top of me for three seconds. That's <laughs> crazy. Now what what is your finishing move? Product placement. <laughs> arm, it's a trapped arm German suplex. Oh, sounds painful. Yeah. There well, you go. That's Obviously it. it is. <laughs> no one, no one kicks out from it. <laughs> wow, that's great. All right. Um, so I know I think we did a little bit of a plug for you. It's uh, productds.com, right? Theproductds.com. Theproductds.com and social media. At theproductds. That's on uh, Facebook. That's on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, that's also my Snapchat too. If you guys feel like Snapchat, oh stuff. hell yeah! I always, I always find those super entertaining. Um, <laughs> and then Facebook, just look up David Star. Uh, you can see my my like page, which is the product David Star. Um, ProWrestlingTees dot com slash David Star. Uh, a bunch of good stuff all over. All that's right, awesome. Do you manage the Pro Wrestling Tees that website? Yeah. So you man? Do you manage the whole thing or just your? Section. My, my, oh god, that'd be, <laughs> yeah. that'd be great. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I manage my own my own site um, in which I put up my designs and stuff. They're great over there. Processing Tees is awesome uh, as far as the way they they treat their wrestlers and stuff. It's uh, or the people on their site. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to check that out for sure. I yeah. um. I'll have this video uploaded later on as well onto my personal Facebook and to the Stack Card Facebook. I believe, though, my posts are private to public. I don't think I have you as a friend because I think your friends exceeded the limit. So when I tried to add you, <laughs> you have yeah, way too many I, friends, uh, Dan. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Cause I, I mean, like, I can't. It's not even necessarily just a wrestling thing. Cause I used to accept everybody mm -hmm. from even when I was in like high school. Like, cause I didn't care. I didn't think it was a big deal. Just to, like, yeah, whatever. I'll be friends with this person, this person, this person. <laughs> um, so I always just accepted everybody. And then when wrestling started kicking up, it just kind of amplified. Of course, yeah. I'll um, I'll try to get it to you the easiest way possible. Though I'll try to like upload it onto our fan site and. Okay, cool. Check out yeah. that. Before we get you out of here, one last thing. Where can fans see you next? What are the next live events that you're going to be wrestling? Next five events. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> five. Let's count them. So Wednesday, Wednesday, I'll just lump Wednesday and Friday together. <laughs> Both at Rockstar Pro in Dayton, Ohio. Um, you can check out Rockstar Pro at DIYWrestling.com. Um, then the next day after the Friday I pay per view, uh, I will be at Legacy Wrestling in Mannheim, PA. Uh, then at the, the, then the 12th is Cage of Death uh, CZW Cage of Death you can uh, it's the biggest event of the year as always um, the main event has Masada versus AR Fox versus Matt Tremont versus Devin Moore in the cage wow. um, it's going to be insane uh, it's at Voorhees New Jersey at Flyer Skate Zone and you, and you got to check out uh, CZ, CZWrestling.com for tickets uh, also check out CZWstudios.com for everything that is CZW there is like so much content on there. It's awesome. And it's only like 10 bucks. And I think it's on Roku now too. And it's like the first month is free. It's uh -huh. so much good stuff from CZW. Um, then after that, I'm at Five Borough Wrestling in Brooklyn, New York. That uh, Five Borough Wrestling in Brooklyn, New York. I'm wrestling Brian Myers. Um, got another Facebook page and their Twitter and stuff. Five Borough Wrestling. 
the next day, I'm at PPW in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, where I'll be wrestling EC3. Uh, I recently won the PPW Heavyweight Championship, so I'll be oh, defending nice. my title against EC3. Awesome. Uh, then after that, where am I after that? It's Christmas weekend. I'm back <laughs> at uh, I'm at LCW in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and then the day after that, I'll be at Beyond Wrestling again uh, for the last show at Fet Music. Uh, and you can check out tickets for that at lookmanofans.com. Uh, and there's also um, another thing for Beyond Wrestling in which they have uh, a subscription service as well. But it's done through YouTube, so it's really, really easy to get access to. Uh, I believe there's two weeks of free of when you get your subscription to Beyond Demand, uh, which is just youtube.com slash Beyond Demand, and you just combine the on demand and beyond. <laughs> it's all like one word, so it's really cool. Um, it's and Beyond has incredible backlog of everything you could think of too. Um, just go out there and support wrestling, and it's, it's all great. So that rounds out my year. <laughs> the last one I have of 2015. So yeah. All right. So there's basically no excuse for anybody not to go out to see you. You're going to be literally everywhere. No so. excuses. Yeah. <laughs> All right, David. Well, thanks for coming on. I really enjoyed talking to you. No, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, and congrats on the title of PPW win. Yep. Yeah, right? Thanks. That means I'm a really good wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And you face an EC3, so... Yeah, um, and then next month, the month after that, there should be something pretty good, too, I imagine. Do you um, know where Beyond will be moving to? Or? Beyond uh, found a building... Uh, in Providence, I'm not 100% sure where it is, but they're also going to be doing more shows, hopefully, um, in Somerville, Massachusetts, which is where they ran, uh, what was it? Powder they Keg. Ran, uh, powder Keg there, yeah. And uh, that building was great, yeah. and I think they're looking to go there and stay in Providence in another building, <laughs> so hopefully that all will uh, that'll all be really good. That'd be amazing, yeah, because we're from Mass, too, so Somerville's right next to us. Right, that building's awesome, right? Yeah, it, it was, is. It was great. It was amazing. So good. All right. All right, we'll talk to you later on then. All right, sounds good, man. Thanks, guys, for Take, having me. Yeah, anytime. Take care. See ya. All right. So that was David Starr. That was a pretty hilarious conversation. That was a great interview. That was awesome, yeah. We learned a lot, so, I mean, this guy is about to blow up. Definitely. He's about to become like a huge, huge star. That's for sure. So he already is, basically. Yeah. I mean, well, his name is David Star, so he is. He a star is the star. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's incredible. The career, you know, how he started, where he is now. It's definitely an awesome journey. Yeah. To see where um, where he started. I like that uh, story about him power bombing the kid. I, <laughs> that came in my head a couple of times. I was like, I could just picture it now. I'm going in there. I could picture it happening on South Park or something. I could see, like, Cartman doing that to Butters. Well, that's what I was thinking, because um, there was a South Park episode with the amateur wrestling, yeah. and uh, the kids thought wrestling was, like, the wrestling on TV, so <laughs> they want to go in there, they want to hit each other with chairs, weapons, and, you know, just and have dramatic storylines. Yeah, they want to get abusive with each other, and then you see this their coach <laughs> grapples him on the ground, <laughs> and he's like, dude, what what? What are you doing to us? This is like, you know, and uh, they, he's like, yeah. no, this is real wrestling. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I thought of that episode as well, but okay. definitely learned a lot more about him and yeah. learned where he got the product. The pro- that was hilarious. <laughs> it was. You and know why uh, he is the product. I definitely want to buy a t-shirt now, so I'll oh, probably yeah. be uh, signing on that soon. And of course. Some. Yeah. And show some support, you know. Yeah. Definitely uh awesome go- guest to have on the show. Yeah, I mean, he has plenty of events lined up down the road, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. So whichever one we end up going to will probably be the Beyond show, that's for sure. We'll so. have to go to that one. I mean, it's right near Christmas, so yeah. there's a lot of travel involved for us, going to see families and whatnot. But uh, yeah. I think it's the last FET event so technically it's, beyond is kind of like our family at this point they, too so they, yeah i love i love beyond wrestling uh drew cordero all the wrestlers that wrestle under beyond wrestling i forgot to mention to david star um oh, what's his name 
trying to think of the the wrestler. Um, he accepted my. I just became friends with him on Twitter, re, uh, Facebook recently. I realized we forgot to ask him about Noah. <laughs> Noah, yeah. I wanted to ask him about that. Then, oh. um, I just became friends with him on Facebook. I told you his name. I'd have to say. I'd have to check again. But him and that manager that comes out with a lot of other wrestlers. Oh. And beyond? I believe it was them too. Yeah, I'm trying to find something here under like recent friends or something. Yeah, because figures when you want to see it, you can't find it. Or figures when you start thinking about it, you don't remember it. That mm. always happens to me. Yeah, I don't know if they have a recent friends on Facebook, but hey, you know. Yeah. Um. Anyway, two of the two of the wrestlers were dancing to David Starr's theme song. Oh wow! Uh, before his match, I seen the little clip someone uploaded it when the wrestlers or fans uploaded it onto uh Facebook. I saw it, so I forgot to ask, but I wonder what his theme song is too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so many questions, you know. We'll have to jot some stuff down. Maybe we'll get them on another time. We'll. Looks like we have a lot more questions for him. So. Definitely. But yeah, we thank David Starr for taking the time out and having a fun conversation with us. And uh, we look forward to his next uh, next show. So I want to see that match with EC3. I mean, I know yeah. he's facing a guy formerly known as Kurt Hawkins. Yeah. So that should be cool. Um, sure. Myers, I believe, right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that should be awesome. Sure, yeah. And Definitely. Unfortunately for us, it's Monday night, and it's looks like it's past eight o'clock. So that means we have to turn on Raw. You mean so, you mean we got to miss Raw? Yeah, we missed about forty minutes, but we'll catch up real soon. Hey man, I'm cool right. with that. You know, yeah. my my uncle just texted me. Oh, get this. Hey Matt, are you watching Raw? Do you believe this idiot? Oh, so I mean, it could be anyone at this point. Yeah. With everything going on in the show nowadays. Um, Always a good start. Definitely. All right, so other than that, that's it for the Stack Hard interview. And we should have, I think, two more later this week. So Yeah, we got Darius Cutter on Thursday, Donovan Dijak Friday, and then next week Sheldon Goldberg and TJ Marconi on the show. So All should right. be awesome. Sweet, sweet. All right, guys. Sense. Thanks for tuning in. Boom. That's it. Stack hard interview. <laughs> Stack hard interview. Not around. Stack hard interview too. Stack hard interview too. Nice. Okay. All right. See Bye. You. We love you. Peace out. We always do.